being your own CEO success circle and this is uh, intended as a support for solopreneurs and this morning we're going to be looking at keyword research uh, our friend David is going to uh, give us a presentation on something he discovered discovered so based on the fact that we do have a presentation to do I think I'll um, try to conserve some time by um, doing our introductions um, that way we we can um, hopefully um, use less time so um, I'll start at the top of my list Alana Birmingham is in Ireland and she supports businesses by creating and maintaining their websites and then we have David Flannery. He is in Illinois, USA, uh, and he creates affordable websites for small business. And then we have Fred Jones, who is in British Columbia, Canada, where I am in Victoria. And he facilitates leadership and community building for youth. And I'm scrolling down my list. And we have Vivek Rayo, and he is in the UK. He simplifies life and business by unifying different technologies and developing software. And I'm Lowell Ann Fulsang. I'm in British Columbia, Canada as well. And I coach retirees who want to create an online business. So, now that we've got introductions out of the way, um, just by way of context, and while we're doing this, I want to change our view to gallery view, uh, so that uh, the viewers out there can see everybody. <laughs> and um, so we, uh, David um, told us quite some time ago that he discovered a slightly different approach to doing keyword research. Now, some of us who are uh, wealthy affiliate members uh, are used to using a tool called Jaxi, and uh, there are many other similar tools out there. But uh, he discovered a process and a way of, of doing your, your research uh, without the use of a, a specific tool. So uh, we thought that would be um, something worthy of further discussion. So <laughs> David, how would you like to um, carry on? And just to give me a minute to uh, set a couple of um, cancel spotlight and I need to make this into full view and so now David if you want to share your screen that should show up on um, in okay. you well I was going to talk for a second or two and then I'd okay. share my screen that's, that's fine um, normally when you do keyword research you're, you're trying to find keyword phrases that um, these these programs tell you have search volume and they uh, um, and you and they also tell you how much competition and these are paid programs like Jaxi um, a Weber and, and, and there's there's a lot more and they they do a fair job I will say that the, usually the results that you get that are that have searches are usually fairly correct and the competition is fairly correct it's when you have keyword phrases that have no searches or very very low searches like uh, jaxi says less than 10 per month um 
I, they have found that those actually do have searches. And I don't know the exact reason. I suspect that what it is is that Google has is now keeping information private that they used to have public, and those tools worked a lot better back then um, on search results. Um, they they don't let as much go public. The last I knew, like only twenty five percent of the searches were people were able to access to be able to do their statistics and whatnot. So. Um, what this place where I uh, subscribe to, it's called Project 24. And then if you look in the, the YouTube uh, um, comments, they, there's a link to it there. Um, they have discovered a new way that doesn't involve paying for a keyword search uh, tool and that you trust Google to tell you that this is a good term to search. Now you have to do what we call alphabet soup. And if anybody who's worked with uh, in wealthy affiliates, that is a popular popular way to find keyword phrases. And so right now I want to walk you through the, their process of how they do it without using a search tool. So I'm going to share my screen. It's going to take a second, so be patient. Okay, does everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, I titled this How to Do Brand Plan Without a Keyword Tool. Um, They've changed the nomenclature from doing keyword phrase uh, searches to brand planning, um, and they they wanted they wanted to do that because when you use the keyword um, uh, phrase, it it, enta it entails people thinking they have to use these keyword tools, and they had trouble with people not understanding what they were trying to do, so. Um, they kind of changed the name. So the next thing is how to start your brand plan. Not, the first step is to find your passion. Second step is to make categories. Third step is to do your research. The fourth step is uh, check your competition. And then you make your, the fifth step is to make your hit list. Whoops, too far. Determine what you're passionate about. Gee, I wonder where I could find a course on that. <laughs> oh, Loanne has one, and you will find the link in the uh, the comments there. So there's a great place to go and find a passion that you want. The, the, the reason you want to do something, especially if you're starting out, something that you're passionate about is when times get tough and you're, you're you're not wanting to ride or you're getting a little depressed because the numbers aren't coming like you think they should. You're passionate about your subject. So you're going to continue working on it. If you're, if it's just something that you pulled out of the air and you don't care one way or the other, it's really easy to give up on it. Um, it also, you feel very, when you do start accomplishing your goals and you still, you, you start getting your traffic, you get a, a, a feeling of accomplishment that you normally wouldn't get. Um, so it, it, it's, it, you get that real good feeling. So, okay. I've heard people say, um, you found your passion if you would do it regardless of whether there's any money involved or not. You just do it because you love doing it. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that, Loanne. Um, oh. I was handing my phone off. Oh. <laughs> anyway, uh, the next step is you take your passion, and um, I'm using how to make kitchen life easier. 
that's that's what my I've decided my passion is going to be in this demonstration. So then I want to break it down, break your subject down to categories. You want to get as many categories as you can that you want to write about. And then you want to determine how many blogs you can write about. And they have a spreadsheet that gives you statistics and everything and on project 24. I've made a spreadsheet that I can make available if people want that doesn't give you the statistics, but does give you the tracking. And it, it, it's nice to have the tracking so you can, you know, know where you're at and keep track of where, where you're, you know, what your posts are. Mm -hmm. So I started breaking down to make kitchen life easier. I put in, you know, some appliances like, whoops, back one, air fryers. And I thought I could do about 40 or 20 posts. Blender, I thought I could do 20 posts. Grill air fryer, not about five posts because that's a real specialty item. Swiffer jet, that's a sweeper, about five. Uh, Bluetooth appliances, about 10. And I, I could go on and on and then and I could get, you know, uh, maybe about 20, 30 different categories. And then they're, uh, their number of posts. So, so then once you can I stop you for a minute and ask a yes. question? <clears throat> so um, just take uh, for um, as an example, the air fryer, how did you come up with uh, the, the number of posts that you figured that you could do? I mean, it was just an educated guess. Okay. It's just what I feel like and I, I, I kind of go through my mind, I can write one. I can write some reviews. I can probably get about 15 reviews out of that. There's enough, enough uh, air fryers. So then uh, I could also um, get, you know, I can write five to maybe 10 more on just general information on the, the air fryer. Um, when I get into it, I might find that I can do a whole bunch more. Like uh, recipes. And, yeah, and recipes yeah. And, okay. and stuff like that. Uh, okay. For me, I didn't want to get into the recipe game because that's just, that's a big rabbit hole. It's it's that shiny object that Jay always talks about that can, 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 that can consume you because recipes, there are thousands and thousands of them. And you can go and, and keep publishing recipe after recipe after recipe and you're not really getting where you want to go. So any other questions on this? So um, <clears throat> um, the, the other observation I guess I would make is um, your first line, how to make kitchen life easier. Um, that's a really, really broad, broad um, idea. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I have an, a, a website for air fryers. It's called Air, air Fryers for Home Use. Mm -hmm. .com, um, and I found that that was way too narrow. Now I probably, after I go through and I get, um, when you, you, if you do your complete uh, categories, you may find that it's very, um, very too broad and that you're going to be writing, you know, you can write 2,000, 3,000 articles and that's not something you're, you want to tackle. You'll spend all your time just writing on that. Um, so you may narrow the niche down. You might go how to make kitchen life easier with small appliances. Mm -hmm. So then you narrowed it down to small appliances <coughs> in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, just, but for my example, I came up with this just to get us in, get us through today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Now you do your research. You take categories and do the alphabet soup, which is a way of searching in Google that allows you to find um, keyword phrases that they say people, you know, that they try to autofill for you. 
And the reason they try to autofill for you is because there's people that have searched those phrases. And that's why you can, why you use them. Um, and you know that there are some searches in it. And so, excuse me, I got a dog here. <laughs> So um, when you do, uh, are you going to show us how to do alphabet soup or just describe yes. it? Okay. No, I'm going to show you how. Oh, I'm all okay. set up to do that, but okay. uh, um, I'm, I'm explaining it a bit. And you also check for competition. Now, normally you, you in the, the keyword search tools, they give you what the competition is. With this method, you have to determine it yourself on whether whether it's a good uh a good uh, uh, phrase to, to search. So let's go down to the next one. These are some that I found with the air fryer. And I determined that, you know, air fryers with rotisseries, what is the best air fryer with a rotisserie, which air fryer has rotisseries, air fryer accessories. And then I, I went through and determined what, how the competition is. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to Go ahead and so those were your own judgments based on your yes. uh, your searching okay <clears throat> and you can see this is my spreadsheet that i have here mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. so sorry i have to add a So I'm doing air fryers first. So the first thing I type in is air fryer. Okay. And it gives me a list of what they think I want next. And I've gone through and I've done uh, air fryer accessories and I've done uh -huh. rotisseries. So the next thing I would do is I'm going to put a space and I'm going to put an A here. And now it tells me that I've got air fryers, asparagus, Amazon, apple chips, Walmart, as seen on TV. There's nothing there that I'm really think that I'm going to use. So I'm going to go to B. Rots, bacon, potatoes, blooming onion. And I'm getting a lot of recipes style stuff, which I'm trying to stay away from. So, so I'm going to, I know I'm going to go through and to save time, I'm going to go. So basically what brother. you do is you put in the one, what, um, the shortest, shortest, uh, uh, like the topic area, space Correct. A. Or well, you Space. start you start with the topic area, see what comes up first, and then after that you do a space and then um, the letter of the alphabet, and then you just go through each letter of the alphabet. Correct. Correct. Okay. Now here's here right here, I I added the word R, because the question mark. Google loves you to answer questions because that's what they're basically about. They, they will rank you high for if you answer a question um, in your, your keyword, finding your keywords. So we start out with our air fryers. And the first one I come up with, our air fryers healthy. That's a good keyword there. So I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna take, And I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go over to my spreadsheet. And I'm going to paste that in. Now, I need to go back to my... spreadsheet. 
are, are they healthy? So now the next thing I'm going to do is look at my competition for this keyword. I have videos and there's a snippet, which means that the, and that's us today, which is a very big website. Medical news, that's a big set, had big uh, um, website. Headline, WebMD, Health Essentials. Um, so you can see that this has a lot of competition. It's gonna be hard to rank for it. So I'm gonna go back to my spreadsheet and put in high. Okay. So then the next thing I do, sorry, is I come here and I look at these keywords, these questions. Is an air fryer really healthy? That's basically the same keyword. So I really don't need to repl mm -hmm. replace it. Are air fryers bad for you? <laughs> That's could be one. Our air fryers toxic. Our air fryers worth it. There's one right there. back over to here. Oops. I wish I could get rid of that uh, zoom header here. It hides my tab. Oh, you can, move, um, you can move the zoom thing up and down if you want to. Hey, very good. Thank you. <laughs> that makes it makes it a lot better. So If I click on this, it, it it changes things around so I don't click on it. I, I um, just type it. Our air fryers worth. Yeah. Wired kitchen. Fine. Okay. What I'm looking for here is, are the are they answering the question? Mm -hmm. This one is answering the question in its title. This one is answering the question. This is not. Mm -hmm. This is basically answering the, the question. This one is not. So you've got some you, it's about medium on on your uh, uh, competition. Now you take a quick look at the, the number one. <clears throat> Not a lot of pictures. It's fairly long. And of course, you would look at at the date it was posted, right? That would be one of yeah. your, one of your factors. Yes, and it's it looks like it's a decent article. Mm -hmm. And it was posted in two thousand eighteen, so it's a little bit old. So, I I would say this this one is is medium. Mm -hmm. And so you just keep going, going 
going through this and you just keep following this process until you get done. And so we're going to go back to our air fryers. And we're going to look at A. And pressure cook, our air fryers and pressure cooker are the same. That's, that's a question that people are asking. So that that's a good one there. Mm -hmm. So what what I observe here is this is a very intensive, lengthy process. Yeah. It's um it takes a little bit of time, but you can go through it fairly quickly. Um I would say you're gonna spend to get like a hundred articles, you're gonna spend probably about three to four hours doing this. Okay. Now, when I do keyword research, when I'm looking up a subject, I usually spend about that amount of time when, when I'm using Jaxi and whatnot going through it. So mm. it, time wise, it's not a saver, but it, it you just go through, you know. And so the other thing that, that uh, what, what you're doing here by going through this is not only, um, you know, looking to see um, um, where your competition is or whatever, but but um, by doing this, you, you could come up with a variety of articles that you could write Correct. on that one subject. Yeah. Correct. And that's what you're what you're trying to do. And then mm -hmm. then after you've exhausted going through all the alphabet and you, you've done that, you look at it and you say, do I have enough articles? Yes, I do. Then you're good. Mm -hmm. um, and then after you've, you know, then you go to your next category and you do the same thing for the next category and the next category. And mm -hmm. you just keep going until you you've you've got, you know, <clears throat> enough to write about. Mm -hmm. um, this is one here that that they don't answer the question. None of the articles answer the exact question. Are air fryers and pressure cookers the same? This is air fryers, pressure cooker. What's the difference? Instapot air fryers, which one's better? Air fryers and pressure cooker, which one's better? That that's not an, that's not answering the the above question. So this one's an easy one to rank for. Mm -hmm. Or low competition. So getting back to this, after you've done your alphabet soup and you've got your article, you've got your, your generalizations of your keywords, then you, you review your list and find the lower competition. And you can sort that. Just do a quick sort. Mm -hmm. Gotta love spreadsheets. Yes, but you can sort it and get all of your lows in one spot and all your highs and and, right. and what and um and so forth. Uh, so, any questions on the alphabet soup? Yeah, Alana, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I'm just wondering, did you try to cross-reference this, um, like double-check it with um, uh, Jaxi or the Keyword Planner at all, just to see if the list you're getting is accurate? When I've done this method um, on different things, on, on different searches, um, 
I have found that I get it's hit or miss. Some of them are great keywords and they give, you know, they have low competition. Um, some of them are, they, they're, they're high competition and some of them have no searches at all. And what they have found is that by doing this method, the ones that have low competition, they're being searched and they have more than, than uh, 10 searches a month. They're finding that some of these that they, they've used um, that they wrote articles on that had no searches when they tested them with the, their keyword tools, um, they were getting a thousand uh, searches a month on that particular article. And it was said to have none. Can and, I elaborate on that? Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Hi, Jay. Many times the alphabet soup uh, correlate to most recent popular searches. Yeah. So, so their keyword tools databases may not reflect this um, because what a lot of keyword databases <laughs> are keyword tool databases reflect on average value based on the past six or 12 months. Um, so when a new keyword shows up using the alphabet soup technique, um, as per what Dave showed, uh, it, it, you know, if you take that information, pop it into a keyword tool, it may show low search volume, but that does not necessarily, ref not, not, not necessarily reflect the true value of how many people are searching that term. What it basically means, it's a recent term that Google has stored in their database that they consider popular based on their initial root keyword that you searched. Yeah. And that's what they're basing this, this by not using a keyword tool. If you just use these, this information here and write your articles, you're going to get searches. You're going to get, uh, you're going to, uh, mm -hmm. get people coming to your, your site because yeah. they're being searched. And, Dave, and did, did you show the related searches on the bottom? In your um, no, I did not. Okay. I can do so, that. I didn't get that far. Okay. But if you go, to, when you get through, this one doesn't have the questions, but then you come down to the bottom and you have related searches that you can also um, use. Air fryers versus cooker, Reddit, that's not too good. Pressure cooker recipes, air fryer recipes, air fryer versus pressure cooker, best air fryer recipe. Yeah. So it's another but you source. can cook in an air fryer. Mm -hmm. That would that would be one that I would. Okay, that's one that I would use. Mm. Okay, and I would transfer that mm. over. Dave, so, did you also um, try to use your phrasing quotes to pull up the exact um, phrase? No, I did not. They didn't. They didn't state that. That's one of those. Um, and see, this one shows that it's got 37 or 36 million searches. Then, so now again, it looks bottom, like. If you scroll to the bottom and go to, yeah, go to 10 and beyond until it stops. That gives you the, that gives you the estimated amount of value. So what, what Dave is doing here is he's he's trying to find the approximate, there we go, so 165. So that's approximately how many um, competitors he would be faced with for this particular keyword, okay? So to find that information out is you basically do exactly what Dave did is you, you Google the term in quotes and what that does to Google says, please show me all web pages that have that exact phrase in your Google database. And you scroll down and you go to the, the very end of the search, like as he did there. And then just above there, it says, in order to show you the most relevant re results, we've omitted some entries very similar to, you know, and it says 165 there. That is a, a number that represents the approximate 
level of competitors, the approximate amount of competitors. So in essence, the term, what was it? Uh, air fryers air and pressure cookers are, are air fryers and pressure cookers the same? So there are 165 different competitors, uh, websites in Google that Google knows about that have that exact term in there. In there, and, and it's not necessarily the title, it just has it in the in the article somewhere, correct? That's correct, yeah. So, okay. so I have a question. So, of both, or both of you, so is 165, uh, can is that too many? Is that hot? A high competition or medium competition or low competition? If you know that there are 165 other websites with that term. I consider that medium. You do, I? Okay. I, I think, Jay, do you agree with that, Jay? Yeah, under under 300, so that's pretty much medium. Yeah. When you... Uh, think, of, think of it like a steak. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. when you get you get to the the fifties level and lower, that's when it's that, that's when you found one that's uh, mm -hmm. that's got very little competition. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and I've also used all in title. It does the same thing, or approximately the same thing. I okay. I didn't catch what you meant by that, David. If you type in I did that right. A I B title. Oh no, I did. <clears throat> Give it to me. I have to. I have to look that up again. It doesn't. This is two L's. So the term is all in title. Is that what we're trying to do? Yeah. Oh, I see. What that's saying is, is this is the um, all the articles that have this phrase is the title. In the title. Okay. And there are eight of them. And you can see that uh, where go? right up here, about eight results. Okay. And it shows up here because it, it's below 10. If it was above 10, then you'd have your, your yeah. bar down here. Mm -hmm. But that, that works too. That, that's, that's what uh, shows you um, what's titled. So there aren't very many with titles. The uh, the other way of doing it shows you the phrase that's if it's in the article itself, right? Title or otherwise. Mm -hmm. Fred is uh, waving a question. Go ahead, Fred. You're um, you're muted. <clears throat> yeah, I had to find the unmute button. <laughs> now this is how. And that's the topic, how to do this keyword mm -hmm. search. I have a question, why? And that's Simon Sinek. Start with why. Why are you doing this search? I know you're saying you want to do posts, but why is the lower better or the higher better? Why? And why are you looking to do posts? So it's the why I'd like to know if that's part of this presentation. but. The how I, I get, but why? Is my why it's, it's, it's something that you want to, you can, it could, you could be monetizing it. 
you know, try to make you're trying to make money off of your idea. Um, you could be wanting just to give information out to people, and you want to be have it so that your site gets gets to people, so that you because uh, you can write article, you can have a blog and have five people come to it and have it that way for years, because no one finds it in in the search because it's buried ten, you know, buried ten pages back or because you're you're writing about stuff that's too competitive or people aren't searching so why why are the lower ones better than the higher ones is what if more there's more searches and more articles isn't that where there's more interest it's it's not more articles it's it's more how many articles there are so you're in competition with those articles if you have only 10 articles and they're not very good to compete against, Google's going to rank you higher if you write a better article. If you have a thousand articles that are that are written very good and they have high domains, you have to have a, a, a high domain presence and you have to have a, uh, you know, a better article than what exists. And that becomes very difficult to do. So you don't want to take on you don't want to waste time writing an article that's not going to get anywhere. So you're, you're wanting lower competition or when you start getting the domain authority, then you can start competing against those, those other uh, places. I answer your question. Yes, you did. Thank you. Okay. So um, there's a question in here from Javita. She said, doesn't Jaxi do, do all these things with competition and ranking difficulty? The, the reason that Jaxi, as we explained earlier, Jaxi will miss newer terms. Yeah. It, won't, it, will, it will tell you that there are no search volume on terms that are good. And so that's why you're using this. Plus, you're paying money for Jaxi when you could do this process for free. It's your poor man's way of doing keyword research, if, if you want to. <laughs> right. Uh, someone that don't have money, you can you can do this and and succeed. Well, Maybe call it bootstrap method. Yeah, yeah. bootstrap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those of us who are not members of WA, correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, um... well, there are there are lots of other keyword uh, tool tools out there that are not necessarily mm -hmm. part of WA. Yeah. I, I yeah. think that as as you, you gain more experience and knowledge with keyword research, you invest more in tools that help you with that. You know, to it's it's the tools that make your job more efficient, you know? Like uh, obviously I use Jaxi as, you know, I, I helped build that thing. So, you know, everything in there is is based on what I perceive as the 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 best most efficient solution to a keyword tool um, but i use other keyword tools as well because some of them are more elaborate just because i have more of a, an elaborate uh, knowledge of, of keyword research so and you know to kind of answer in addition to dave's answer with the why um, you know what basically i do is I'm trying to put myself in front of the people who are Googling these terms so that I can help them with my content. And the way that I'm helping them with my content is I'm understanding their behavior. I'm understanding <clears throat> what they're searching. And by understanding what they're searching, I can then understand how to help them. And of course, for my time, for helping them with my content, I'm steering them in the right, what I perceive as the right direction, either with a product or a service, or you know, or just a, having them comment on my article and say thank you for your, your help, you know, or to engage in a conversation. But that really is, in my opinion, the the premise of the why is to help these people. You know, it's like it's like they've come into your office and they're asking a question. And you need to really deep, you know, dive down into as to why they're asking that question so that you can help them with the best answer. Um, yeah, so, and in terms of keyword research tools, I think there are various levels of them. 
Uh, Jaxi, I think, is a great entry point for an invested keyword research tool, and it will certainly help you put yourself and your content in front of the audience that you're trying to get in front of. Okay, so I think that's a it's a really good you know like I, I have a I use a, an advanced keyword research tool called Ahrefs, and it is much more advanced. Can can I just quickly share my screen here? Is that okay? Yeah, let me stop. Where's my stop button? At the bottom of the screen. Oh, where is your stop button? All right. Well, remember he moved it, so now it's discombobulated <laughs> there. So it's just... Well, you know, I mean, in, in the meantime, what I would say, I, like I use Jaxi, and sometimes when you get one of those results, you, there's something you've got, you've got an idea for a keyword for an article and you get that minus 10 lower than 10 result then that's when i would if i really if i'm really committed to that that um, particular topic then i would then i would go and do the pieces that that uh david was showing but i th i think that jaxi is is a great place to start or any tool that that does it quickly for you. It, I mean, it just saves a bunch of time. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You just need to know how popular the search is and how hard it would be to get it in Google, you know? Yeah. Um, but as you, as you get more advanced, you know, and when you start doing this for other people, you know, you want to start investing in some bigger keyword tools. So this is the tool that I was mentioning. Um, so it's called Ahrefs. Yeah. It's uh it's a very elaborate tool, as you can see, with the fancy pants charts and graphs and stuff like that. So I, I did air fryer. So I searched air fryer. So we can see that the term air fryer is searched approximately 466,000 times every month. Um, and you, you get these waves, which is kind of neat, right? And you can see these waves represent months. So Christmas time, Christmas time, Christmas time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, now, this is the level of difficulty out of 100. So 50 would represent that it's pretty darn hard. Now, the great thing about this particular tool is it gives me the ability to, similar to Jaxi, give me other keyword research or other search uh, uh, volumes. So down here, I can see some other search terms. Yeah. So for example, how does an air fryer work? 14,000 times a month. Now, if I click on that, that will tell I'm going to actually do it in a new tab. <clears throat> so we can see that the term is searched 14,000 times. And it has a difficulty of 40. So less than the air fryer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but if we look here, keyword ideas, so that are kind of very similar, it says, well, what is an air fryer and how does it work? Well, that's only searched 1,300 times, but I bet it might have a little bit less of a competition. So, you know, it's, it's a little harder, as it says. Right. Now, here's what I do, is I take a, a, what's called a parent term, which is this, like a root basic term, and then I do, I click on this thing here, it says, uh, having the same term, right? So I want to see other keywords that have the same term, and I want to find something that I can actually rank for. So right now it's showing me 186,468 keywords that um, have at least the term air fryer in it. Now, all, a lot of these are, if you look at the KD, the keyword difficulty, you know, you can see this is 50, 45, 36, obviously hard. There's a few there that are a little bit less. Mm -hmm. I want to find, I just want to find keywords that are easy to rank. So I'm going to create what's called a filter. And the, the filter is right here where it says, well, sh only show me keywords that are, have a difficulty of a maximum 20. Remember it's out of a hundred. The threshold for the easy is from uh, zero to 20. Yeah. So apply. Let's see how many that gives us, if any. Okay, so now we only have 7,089 keywords left. But the good thing is 
out of those 7,000, those are all potentially rankable keywords. Mm -hmm. So now let's take a look, you know, that's still a lot. So let's make sure that we have a minimum. We want to make sure that the, the keyword that we invest in has at least, let's say, a thousand searches a month. So I'm going to apply that. And let's see how many that gives us. Okay, now it has, now we have 478 keywords. Hmm. So that looks pretty good. So, you know, in essence, now I've got a list here that I can work with that I could potentially get a great deal of content in here. And you did it in, right. and you did it in uh, less than five minutes. Mm -hmm. Whereas my method's going to take you, you know, a, a few, couple hours. A few hours. But, yeah. 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 But so the difference it, is, is mine is, time free is money. And, and, yeah. Yeah. yeah time time is money. Is money. And it's a lot of money. It's not just a little bit of money, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Call for pricing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but this is this is interesting because what what um, what we're showing here is it can be done mm -hmm. uh, depending on the amount of time that you that you have and the, the amount of money that you have available to do. So mm -hmm. it can be done using a tool, various various levels of tools, or it can just be be done with Google. And I, I think it's important for everyone to understand that, that, um, exactly. I mean, if you're starting out if, as, as a, um, a solopreneur, a brand new solopreneur, you're going to select, you're going to choose the bootstrap way. There's no question mm -hmm. about that. But then as time goes on, and uh, I'm noticing that uh, Javita um, out there in the comments is saying um, that um, Jaxi, uh, a, a certain aspect of Jaxi is free with a premium um, membership of WA. So it comes uh, bundled with, uh, with the, uh, all the other um, advantages of, of WA. But mm -hmm. not everybody belongs to WA, and uh, that was why we decided that it would make a good sense to um, to show how this can be done without without any tool whatsoever. Yeah. Although I it guess does that even exist an air fryer toaster oven combo? Is that a real yeah. thing? Yes, it is. Oh. Uh, well, there you go. There's a great search term that you can Google about best air fryer toaster oven combo. Yeah. Uh, they're just now coming out with them. They, they, um, that it's a fairly new, new item that, uh, well, mm. actually toaster ovens with convection fans have been, out, been out for a long time, but right. they don't get the, the volume of air that an air fryer does. They put new ones out where it's actually a toaster oven and you can uh, change it to air fryer and you get, uh, they have a, uh, a larger, CFM fan that allows you to uh, get uh, more airflow through the the oven so that it it mimics the frying uh, you know the air yeah. fryers. Okay, we're Sounds off. like you picked up a little bit of knowledge. We're off we're <laughs> off topic here. <laughs> this is, we're not all about air fryers. We're talking about Dave. How do I buy an air fryer tonight? Right now. <laughs> okay, you you could go to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm looking at the time, uh, and I just want to make sure that uh, everybody has their questions answered uh, about about doing a, a search without the uh, without the expensive tools. I I have uh, to admit I I I'm I I I don't have the patience to do alphabet soup. <laughs> Uh, Jivita says uh, on um, YouTube comment, Uber suggest is a great free resource. Oh, well there. Thank you, uh, Jivita. The, Uber the, suggests. Uh, I've always Uber. used alphabet soup. I, I've, I've always gone mm -hmm. through it when I'm looking for keywords. And then I, I would bounce them through a keyword tool and discard the ones that had zero. But now I'm to the point where 
if I do an alphabet soup uh, search, I'm going to use the keywords, whether it says it, I would be using the, uh, if I use Jaxi or some other tool like that, I'm going to use that to determine if there's a lot of competition. Right. Okay. So, um, last word, Fred, you want to have the last word? <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> well, what I appreciated about it is the fact that you saw the bootstrap and then we saw the, the uh, luxurious uh, Lamborghini uh, <laughs> thing. And I think that really showed the fact that Jay came in as well. So, and Dave showed the, mm -hmm. the simple method. And then we said that here's the luxurious method. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've got the money, you can buy the Lamborghini, but if you don't, you need the old uh, wheelbarrow. So that that I think was the best. Uh, I appreciated that. <laughs> yeah, the contrast. Yeah no, I, yeah, no, the contrast really helped mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. Right on. Okay, so thank you for the last word, and um, I think it's time to um, stop our recording, uh, and I shall do that shortly with a reminder. It's important to do what you love with passion. And uh, I might say that um, next week and the, the following four weeks are yet to be determined. I have a few ideas. I think um, we may talk about uh, some, some um, technology next time, but um, I, haven't, uh, I haven't verified as yet. So stay tuned for the next month's um, series um, yet to be determined. Okay, I will um, stop streaming now, or no, I won't. I will do the outro, which is oh, four, so thank you.